that's what diamond is. Hello, pizza. Ah! She's living the dream. Living my best life. Dinner time. Britain is a nation hooked on fast food. <laughs> we scoff 22 million takeaway meals every week. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And increasing numbers of us are binging on junk twice a day. Yeah, let's do it. We're in the grip of a national obesity crisis and fast food joints are dominating high streets across Britain. Do you have customers coming in daily? Yes, they are addicted. But what is all this junk food actually doing to us? Sorry, I'm about to belch. Now six famous faces. Mm. It's probably the first time ever that anybody has arrived for dinner at number 10 carrying their own burger. ...have agreed to put their bodies on the line. Eat it! Eat it! ..and become guinea pigs in an extreme scientific experiment to find out. Oh, Jesus Christ. I just feel ghastly. This unique experiment will be overseen by dietary expert Dr Michael Mosley. We really are going to be pushing our volunteers to the limit. For 21 days, Michael will force feed our human lab rats burgers, fried chicken and pizza. Britain's favourite junk foods. In what's known as an overfeeding study. Yummy, eh? And here we go. We'll uncover how junk food takes hold and affects everything, from your stomach... I've got caught cool short. ..to your sleep... Morning! ..to your brain... Peter's got more activation than the vast majority of people who are obese. And some of these people were really obese. To your lifespan. She's at risk of a stroke. Really. And crucially, we'll reveal which of our favourite junk foods is the worst for fat, sugar and salt. The impact on their bodies was far more devastating... Good night. ..than anybody would have thought possible in such a short period of time. To kick off the junk food experiment, Michael Mosley has invited his celebrity guinea pigs to lunch at a local diner. I'm actually very nervous because they have bought into it, they've been tested, but the actual reality is going to be today when I tell them and when I show them what they're going to have to be eating over the next three weeks. I just hope they don't walk out at that point. Michael's first guinea pig is the original Mr Six Pack. Singer and songwriter Peter Andre. Hello, hi. hi, Michael. How are Hello, you? Very good to see you. Nice to see you you're too. You're looking fantastic, you are... I have to say. Well, I'm not sure you're going to say that in a few weeks. <laughs> and you I'm, I'm hoping not. Peter works out six times a week and reckons that gives him a free pass to eat what he wants. I've always believed that we should focus more on activity than about what we eat. Now, look, don't laugh. It is 90s. I'm going to go the whole hog. I want to see whether I'm actually right, that maybe when you balance out bad food and train, you're fine. Hey. Look at this man. He looks sexy. I feel good. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Bye. Meet oh, Andre. Gosh, yeah. Hello. Next to donate their body to science is MP... Ms Nadine Doris. The UK is now the third most obese nation in the world, and that is a shocking fact, especially... I really want to do the experiment because obesity is something many people should be concerned about, and it certainly worries me. Nadine relies on a healthy diet and exercise to stay sharp. I really need to be absolutely on it and absolutely focused. I think this is going to be the biggest challenge I've ever faced. When you know your health is going to be impacted, that's pretty daunting and pretty challenging. Do you know who I am? I'm Nadine yeah. Dorries. Oh. So you don't know who I am, do you? I, no, no, do You're you know talking what? to me like you know me. I went in the jungle. You, you did, you did, you did. Good morning, hi there. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Joining Peter and Nadine is Cory actress Hayley Tamadden. Hayley loves her food, but like about 20% of Britons, she's living with a digestive condition, irritable bowel syndrome. I want to do this experiment to prove that it is all about what you eat that affects your body, whether you've got IBS or not. Cheers. Good luck with this. It is going to be a challenge. I think for the first few days, I, it might be all right. I think for the first few days, it might be quite fun, and I think I might join you for a pizza. <laughs> as long as you buy me a girdle. <laughs> this is exciting. Are you ready for this? I'm ready to eat. 
Who is it, Hoodie? Good morning. Hi there. Good morning. How are you? The fourth volunteer is the chase's dark destroyer, or Sean Wallace to his mates. I like fast food. Sometimes I am a sort of a junk food junkie. He's also a practising barrister. I live a very hectic and very busy lifestyle. How are you? All right. Nice to meet you. Sean has a family medical history that puts him at higher risk of damage from junk food. Both my parents had diabetes type 2. I didn't want that to affect me, so that's why I want to take part in this experiment. I want to see whether it affects my health. Thank you. Cheers. Are you ready for this? It was as ready as I've ever been for <laughs> Madness in this house. <laughs> Just absolutely crazy. Our fifth volunteer is six-time Olympian Tessa Sanderson. Obesity is something that I really, really fear. It's going to escalate, and we've just got to do something about it. Tessa's now mum to six-year-old twins and has strong opinions about the nation's health. It's up to the parents, and this is where a lot of the obesity comes in for youngsters, is because parents have to start from home. We like to have healthy things in the morning, don't we? Yeah! I'm the oldest wow. here. How old are you? 61. Are you no, you're serious? not. How old are you? I'm 62. <gasps> you're only no just way. older. You're going to be amazing. Oh, that is mental. Oh, Hugo. Morning, hi there. Morning. Bringing a bit of posh to our set of human guinea pigs is made in Chelsea star and health food fanatic Hugo Taylor. I think I specifically want to do this. I guess in a kind of almost, a, not a charitable way, but I want to bring attention to something which I think is a really dangerous issue in this country. I personally think it's easier than ever to eat healthily in the UK. Dragon fruit, you've got avocado, you've got all these amazing things. Au naturel. I'm feeling extremely apprehensive about doing the experiment. I genuinely am more nervous about this than I think anything that I've ever done before. So yeah, somewhat savouring this last, like, sacred cup of of how from a nice, beautiful, sunny afternoon in London um, before the darkness sets in. Right. Thank you very much for being here. I was slightly apprehensive as to whether you'd all turn up because this is a pretty hardcore thing you're about to commit to. You're going to be eating three classic fast food types, yeah? Time to get your food. It's going to be a delight and surprise. For the next 21 days, our famous guinea pigs will be fed burgers, fried chicken and pizza every day. Junk food is fast food that's high in fat, salt and sugar. It's fine as an occasional treat, but the problem is now that it's become a lifestyle. And by following Michael's diet, his victims, uh, I mean volunteers, will be consuming 50% more calories than their bodies need over a short period of time. Their bodies will display effect normally associated with eating too much in the long term. It's extreme, but because it's a controlled experiment, it will allow Michael to measure side effects from the food. OK, so I'm going to pair you up as buddies so that you can encourage each other and things like that, and you're all going to start with different things. So pizza for you two okay. for a week. And then it's going to be chicken over here. OK. Chicken, chicken run for you. Last but not least, you two are going to be the burger twins, at least for a week. Oh. And at the end of a week, you're all going to swap over and I'll give you your new instructions. The experiment will use what's called a crossover model, common in medical trials. Every guinea pig will spend a week on each food before swapping to the next one. OK, get stuck in. Bottoms up. Cheers. Let's go. Cheers. Mmm. I'm actually Let's go. excited. Mmm. That tastes nice. Oh, yummy. This one's lovely. <laughs> yeah, this is my third piece of chicken now. I'm very proud of you. I mean, when you look over the table, everything's beige. Huh. Yeah. I'm so full. How's your burger, Pete? Honestly, it hasn't even touched the sides yet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you feel the same way in about a week's time. Yeah, I feel a little dirty. Oh, I don't. A little dirty in a good yeah. way? Yeah. No. <laughs> like dirty. Dirty. Like I've done something wrong. OK. So this is a brilliant start, and I'll leave you to digest. Cheers, Michael. Yeah. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Well, wow. Actually sitting there with the food in front of me and eating it, it's like when you visualise something and you think, how bad could it be? And then it actually happens and it's worse. I'm freaking out. It's week one of our junk food experiment, and around the country, our brave lab rats are getting stuck in. 
Hello, pizza. Ah. Oh, hello, gorgeous son in law. Come in. Hey, yeah, I'm fine. You got my grub. It's already become a family affair for MP oh, Nadine. Oh. The taste is nice. And her mm. burger eating buddy Peter is not far behind. I can handle that, and I can handle that, and I can handle that. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no, eat your porridge, please. By day three, Tessa is going strong. What have I got to have this morning? Yes, pizza! I think I have a healthy relationship with food. Husband Denson, however, begs to differ. What about all the chocolate you eat? Huh? What about all the chocolate? She eats a lot of chocolate. No, yeah, I like chocolate. I think I have a healthier breakfast than you. You, She likes to have a lot of fried food in the morning. Hey, it's such a free bar. Oi, I but... have that very rare. All these, see? All of these. That there is a must with bananas and things like that. Well, whatever the truth, it's pizza for now. Eat it. Oh, Whether you eat one pizza, it means you get 100 calories. There's more than 100 calories in one of those. One billion! Could be. One thousand. That's why you shouldn't eat it so much. In Chelsea, Tess's partner in pizza crime, Hugo, is struggling. Yo and is already showing worrying signs of avocado withdrawal symptoms. It's like a really bad one-night stand. Like, you're in there, you're enjoying it at the time, and then as soon as it's done, you, you just want to get out the door and shower. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I believe in lean living. You know, my mum was part of the organic wave before it became, you know, extremely commonplace. Looking forward to lunch today? <laughs> Ravenous. Yeah, what, what, what's on order today? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how terrified I am about doing this. Thanks, dude. It's taking myself massively out of my comfort zone, and, you know, I'm trying to do this for other people, so it's kind of like a selfless act, I guess. Well, as the nation heaves a collective sigh of gratitude, Hugo takes one for the country. Dalai Lama did say that too much rich food makes you sick. Yeah. So everything in moderation. Oh, mine is pretty good. Mm. Conservative MP Nadine Dorries hasn't had a burger for over 20 years. Until now. I'll give you a biscuit after. And after only four days of eating them non-stop, she's hit the wall. I feel horrible. I've got a headache. I've got a tremor in my fingers. And I just feel ghastly. Watch this. See what happens when I press it. Can you see the fat running inside? In Westminster for her day job, Nadine is concerned there may be another unexpected side effect. I'm forgetting things. I'm um, just not feeling good. Very um, forgetful. Have we got the whipping through for next week yet, please? While there are limited studies on memory and junk food, Nadine is in little doubt that the burgers are affecting her brain as well as her body. With an important commons appearance to make, Nadine is now worried her memory will fail her. Oh! I'm about to go into the uh, chamber in the House of Commons to give a speech on childhood obesity. Normally, I'd just done that and deliver it myself from my head. I don't trust myself to do that tonight. I've actually written a speech out. So, for the first time in years, I'll be reading from a speech. As we know, the second biggest preventable cause of cancer is obesity. This, for me, is like a failure, you know? And I think if I lived on this diet, I'd always be speaking from notes. This is such a crisis. But as a true daughter of Britannia, she battles on. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And later that same night, Never Say Die Nadine collects her next burger. Thank you. <laughs> My dinner. Enjoy. And heads off for a very special dinner appointment. I think it's probably the first time ever that anybody has arrived for dinner at number 10 carrying their own burger. As Nadine and her little bag of junk food make political history. Thank you. Peter Andre is over in Surrey, brimming with enthusiasm for his new super-sized diet. OK, burger done. This bag was 
so loaded with chips. I must have had at least two of these. I'm stressing because I actually enjoyed it that much. But Peter's doctor wife, Emily, is less enamoured of his new, rather smelly suppers. <laughs> John Food Bliss. He's basically been banned from the living room because it stinks way too much. All the burgers this week. And he even smells in bed. Peter and his family believe in healthy home cooking, mostly. I cook a lot, yes, but I do eat all the foods that I love, burgers or chocolates. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. Say one of these bars like that, I will have at least half of that every night without fail. It's part of our routine a little bit, the, like, put the younger kids to bed, sit on the sofa, have a cup of tea, have a biscuit. It's the carnage, carnage. Like Peter, many of us Brits love our takeaways. <laughs> Offering three million fast food meals every day. But what exactly is the junk in the meals we call junk food? Michael Mosley wants to find out and to determine which kind of junk food is worse for our health. So here we have burgers and chips, chicken and chips, and pizza. Yummy. But what exactly is in them? One way to find out is to blend them and have the results analysed by a lab. Right, let's start the pizza. To get a good cross-section of what's being sold on Britain's high streets, we've gathered samples from nine random takeaways. Three specimens of each one of the three foods. Oh. Blending gives the sample a uniform consistency, allowing us to measure what's actually in them more accurately. So there you go. Pizza. Chicken and chips, burger and chips. I have to say, this is not the most delicious meal I've ever concocted in this kitchen. A battery of tests was done on our various sludges, and the results are in. So which of these bad boys is the worst? In third place, burger and chips. This is the least offensive of the three fast foods. That said, it's all relative, because in a single burger and portion of chips, you have around half your daily allowance of fat, salt and sugar. That's not good. But now things are going to get a bit more scary. In second place, the fried chicken. Low in sugar, but that's the end of the good news. Two out of the three samples we sent off to be analysed contain more than the recommended daily allowance for salt. But fat is the truly shocking thing here. Now, the recommended daily allowance for fat is around 70 grams, and each of our samples easily exceeded that. So in one meal, you would easily exceed your allowance for the whole day. One of our specimens contained trans fatty acids. Now, these are the worst sort of fats. They can give you high cholesterol, which clogs up your arteries. Yet this sample contained 23 grams, which is almost five teaspoons worth. Now, for first place in our hall of shame, the deliciously evil pizza. This has got everything. Your daily allowance for salt is six grams, about a teaspoon worth. All of these exceeded that, this one by more than double. And fat levels were really shocking. Every single one of the pizzas we tested were well over your fat recommended daily allowance. For the big daddy here, the 18-inch pepperoni, it's around two and a half times your recommended daily allowance, the equivalent of about three quarters of a pack of butter. Now, we are programmed to feel good when we eat fat, salt and sugar. It lights up areas in our brain. But we were never intended to eat them in these amounts. Across Britain, our valiant volunteers are consuming these colossal levels of bad stuff pretty much all day, every day. So it's no surprise the end of the week can't come soon enough for some. Especially for IBS sufferer Hayley. I'm having a bit of difficulty um, stomaching this one. There's so much oil, it's so much grease. But she's still bravely chomping through enough fried chicken to alarm some of her Coronation Street chums. For somebody who is normally super healthy, she does seem to be eating a lot <laughs> of junk food. So, supper is um, a fried chicken wrap. Enjoy. As you feel sick, thinking about Go it. Get it down here. There she goes. Good girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
For Dr. Mosley, Haley's IBS is a real concern. So I've eaten it and um, I have instant tummy ache. Like, instant tummy ache. Haley is prone to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, which is actually very common. In her case, she gets gas, bloating, pain. This food, the amount of oil, like gas and grease, is making me feel pretty rotten. Now, for the last two years, she's managed to really control it very well. But I am a little bit anxious. This fast food diet will trigger some pretty violent reactions, in which case she's going to be in a lot of discomfort. Fried chicken is not good for me. In fact, by day six, the low-fibre junk food diet has plunged everyone's downstairs into disarray. I'm passing rubber pellets occasionally, that's it. I'm wondering what the hell this is doing to my insides. My stomach just rumbles all day long. Michael and his experts are keeping a close eye on everyone's health and have a special interest in their bowel movements. So just before the experiment began, we asked Nadine to take a very special comfort break. I've had to do a poo sample this morning. I've had to kind of poo to order which is not normal, but, uh, but I've managed it. So, yeah, here it is, my poo sample. I wonder if the House of Commons authorities will complain that I've been doing poo samples in my office. <laughs> this baseline sample will be analysed and we'll compare it to Nadine's later offerings at the end of the experiment. Guess what time it is? Dinner time. Yet more and more pizza. The monotony of eating the same plain, bland, beige food is really going to get to me now. Fortunately for clean eater Hugo, we've come to the end of the first week. And it's time for our famous faces to check in with leading Harley Street weight management doctor, Enam Aboud. And relax. All six guinea pigs underwent a full medical screening at the beginning of the experiment to make sure they are healthy enough to take part. It's impossible. I feel good. After a week of stuffing themselves with junk food, they're here for a weigh-in. Surprisingly, hardly anyone has gained weight. Isn't that interesting? But fried chicken scoffer Haley's waist has expanded by three inches. Oh my gosh. That could be gut inflammation. Ooh. Burger enthusiast Peter is the exception. He's gained 2.3 kilos, around five pounds, after just seven days of junk food. Could any of it be muscles? <laughs> All done. Tests done. Time for a catch up and find out what everyone's eating in week two. We've got the worst one over. The chicken challenge is not one to be messed with. It's not food that we actually hate, because I don't really hate junk food. I love it. But, it's just the but somebody has gone AWOL. OK, hi, hello. How are you? I'm fine, but I'm worried about you. How's it going? It's been pretty difficult. I have these mental barriers that I can't seem to break down to be able to ingest that quantity of food on such a regular basis. On the day after I saw you, I had a pretty like full-blown anxiety attack on the on the Saturday morning. Hugo spoke with Dr. Aboud and consulted a psychologist, as apparently the experiment is making him overly anxious. Psychologically, I just I'm not the right test case for you guys here. I'm sorry to let you down. Not at all. I mean, thanks very much for kind of taking part. OK. Thanks, Hugo. Ciao, ciao. I like how abruptly he ended it. <laughs> you know what I mean? The experiment is over. Can you please now exit? Um, I mean, I feel a little bit, like, crappy about everything, to be honest. Mm, that is hugely disappointing, although not entirely surprising. And it just shows how tough this sort of thing is. The Remainers have been told which food they're switching to for week two of the junk food experiment. Nadine and Peter are moving to chicken. Mm. OK. Sean and Hayley have got pizza. Happy, Hayley. 
Ah, uh, chicken hell, this is pizza heaven. And Tessa, with Hugo gone, will now be shouldering the burden of Burger Week alone. This is nice, actually. I quite like that. Aren't you taste OK? Hi there. Hi, there. Hi there. Oh, you're looking pretty perky, I have to say. Sadly, we have an empty chair there, don't we? Oh, well. Yeah. Hugo, yeah. That's how it goes. Bless him. The clue was in the name, though. It wasn't Hugh Stay, it was Hugh Go. So <laughs> oh, 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 another one! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you pleased to be moving on? Absolutely. It was hell. How are your bowels? They're really, really not good. To be honest, uh, for the first three days, I passed stalls twice and I was beginning to get worried. Then I was going to get my last meal, and I got caught short. Uh, I had to drive all the way down the North Circular Road. Run of green lights, it was fantastic, and I managed to get home, and the minute I pushed the key in the door, went upstairs. We could imagine. We'd rather not imagine, but, yeah. And what do you think you're going to look forward to most at the end of the whole experiment? The end. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were five. Sometimes you just want to kick back, put a movie on and have a pizza. She's living the dream. Living my best life. Mm. <laughs> it's week two of the junk food experiment, mm. where five brave volunteers are mm. taking part in an overfeeding experiment. Not bad. So we can find out just what junk food is doing to the rest of us. Honestly, though, buzzing, buzzing. But I wonder if that's because I've done exercise and drunk loads of water. Now when I'm going to go and consume these calories, I may think very different. Brexiteer Nadine Dorries is all for remaining on the junk food experiment in Westminster, where she shares her chicken and chips with Tory pal Jacob Rees-Mogg. While the other four guinea pigs are on a fact-finding mission at one of the nation's 52,000 fast food outlets. Aladdin's in West London is typical of many of the fried chicken shops on the British High Street. Today, Hayley is front of house. Next, please. Whilst Peter and Barrister Sean are getting down to the nitty-gritty of exactly how their dinner is made. Well, I'm really interested to uh, find out what uh, is contained in making up fried chicken. I mean, he's a big guy, so we're going oh, right. to need to know the truth. Oh, yeah. well, I'll give you the whole truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Truth is, we love our chicken in the UK, and it's the most eaten meat outside the home. So now we have the, the wing pieces, these are the legs. You know, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is a lot of people, when they think about fried chicken, they never know what's the actual meat, if it's, yeah. you know, off cuts or whatever. But as you oh, can no, see, these are, these are, these are prime cut. It's usual for fried chicken to be coated in breading, which is made up of flour, spices and salt. Hey, shake it, but don't break it, brother. <laughs> Sorry. And leading brands of breading we researched contained up to 14% salt in the mixture. So apart from the salt content, really, the other ingredients don't sound too bad at all. Get in half right. <laughs> it's actually at the cooling stage where fast food such as fried chicken and chips absorbs the most oil. So that shake and bang you see in a fast food shop is an important step in reducing this, and it's estimated it removes 20% of fat by doing it. Woo! Do you find that you have a lot of the same customers coming in daily? Some that come uh, even twice a day. You must know everyone. Yeah, I pretty much do. When they were kids, I'm now serving their kids. Wow. Really. They are addicted to uh, the fast food. Really? Do you really they think they're addicted. addicted to it? They are. Do you eat here? Uh, do you eat I, your food? You know, the truth is, I don't eat that often, uh, but I would say that if I did eat here every day, it would be a problem. This industry, like many industries, whether we're talking about something which is absolutely unhealthy, like smoking or alcohol and fast food, anything which is taken on the extreme is never good for you. One needs to eat moderately. It's a lifestyle that one chooses. I think that's a really lovely, honest answer. 
Alarmingly, various research studies suggest that fast food lifestyles are now becoming the norm in the UK. Since 2010, the number of fast food shops have increased by 34%. And it's estimated that one in six older teenagers now eat fast food twice a day. All right, guys, uh, the junketeers, as I'm calling ourselves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Winners never quit, and quitters never win. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> the junketeers are now halfway through the experiment, and our famous faces have certainly been filling their faces. And a few other things. I just tried to get dressed this morning, but my jeans on, and this is my problem. As well as muffin tops, the volunteers are starting to show signs of potentially worse side effects. It's estimated that two-thirds of Brits suffer from interrupted sleep. Latest studies suggest a possible link between this and a high-fat and sugar diet. So the guinea pigs' bedrooms have been rigged with night vision cameras. And it looks like they've all been having trouble in the sack. That was probably the worst night's sleep I've had. So I had a terrible sleep. I woke up at 3 a.m. and it was like morning. I was wired. Uncomfortable, constantly waking up. At one time, I was awake for about an hour. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. And then suddenly, I just crushed. Michael has asked Dr. Ian Smith at Britain's leading sleep clinic to analyse their sleep data. He believes that the foods they're eating may be affecting them. I assume that what's happening is that they're a much bigger swing in their blood sugar level, in the levels of important hormones in their body, particularly insulin, that those swings are peaking, helping them get to sleep, but then they're getting into troughs that are waking them up in the small hours of the night. Eating refined carbohydrates like those found in fast food late at night can be detrimental to your sleep. What I'd do for a nice apple. But more worryingly, Dr. Smith has noticed something potentially serious in Sean's sleep data and has asked him to attend his clinic at Papworth in Cambridge. Sean, hi. Hello, Ian. On average, have you any idea how much sleep you get a night? I would say, on average, about five and a half hours. And has anybody ever told you that you stop breathing in your sleep? No, definitely not. When you stop breathing whilst asleep, it's called sleep apnea. These pauses can be anything from 10 seconds up to two minutes. Undiagnosed, the condition can lead to serious complications. It's thought as many as one and a half million Brits could be affected, and it could be made worse by a junk food diet. Right. Sean may think he doesn't have sleep apnea symptoms, but years of his junk food lifestyle have contributed to an already low quality of sleep. The junk food experiment could be pushing him close to full-blown sleep apnea. Wow, look at look at it. This test, called a polysonogram, will be able to build a detailed picture of his sleep habits. It will measure everything Sean does in his sleep. And he's awake. <laughs> How did you sleep last night? Well, that's what I said very well. Dr Ian will need more than one night's data to properly diagnose Sean, so we'll monitor him at home for the rest of the junk food experiment. Good night. In Manchester, although Haley has preferred the pizza diet to the fried chicken, it's all junk food as far as her irritable bowel syndrome is concerned. I am actually really in pain. Like, massively in pain. Yeah, I can tell. Haley's reaction to overeating junk food is quite severe, so Michael sends her to see Dr. Abood. How does that feel? Tender. All right. That's very... I'm so sorry. How is here? Oh, my God, that's really bad. How about here? Oh, it's you are pain. really very inflamed. Before the experiment, when I checked you, it was all soft and nice and no, no tenderness, but now... That shocked me a little bit. How much oh, that I'm hurt? so sorry. It's really totally inflamed, sweetie. It's OK. It's OK. So I've eaten it and um, 
I have instant tummy ache. Like, instant tummy ache. That hurt way more than I and then you expected. Yeah. yeah, this is why I wanted to examine you. There is a general inflammation of your digestive system. Knowing that, we've really got to consider whether it is really a good idea to continue. I can do one more week. Please, don't let a pride play a role here. Is your health as paramount? It has to come first. Yep, that's become real, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm worried and concerned that the damage this junk food is, is doing, it might not be reversible if we let Haley continue for another week. After reviewing her medical notes, Dr. Aboud feels it's too dangerous for Haley to continue. Hello. Haley, hello. I've really been given this a really, really, really deep and thorough thought. I am asking you, please, uh, not to continue with the experiment. I'm worried about you. OK. OK. It wouldn't be ethical to allow you to continue. Um, your health is paramount and it really comes first and it's totally priceless. Thank you so much. The fact that she said that she was concerned hit home. I'm kind of putting myself through this for the benefit of the experiment because I want to help as much as I can. But I think I've also been covering up a little bit how much it's been hurting me. And today, I couldn't cover it up anymore. And then there were four. It's week three of the junk food experiment. Our remaining volunteers have reached the final stage and swapped to their final food type. With Haley gone, Chaser Sean is bravely handing Burger Week alone. Here goes. And partners in crime Peter and Nadine are now on the pizzas. The chicken's out my system. Now it's pizza time. Let's do it. This is going to be absolutely no problem Cheers. at all. Cheers. Cheers. I'm not going to lie, this Hawaiian is fantastic. Oh, excuse me. Tessa should be starting on fried chicken, but after a week of burgers, she's been taken ill, and Dr Michael is worried. I've been woken up with the most massive headache. It's really aching, and uh, right here in my eyes as well, very much like a migraine. I haven't had a headache like this for a very, very very long time. I do feel tremendous sympathy for her, I must admit. She's a tough woman, she's not a moaner, so if she's talking about a headache, then she's got something really serious going on. It's a worrying development for the 62-year-old Olympic champ who started the experiment as healthy as someone half her age. And it has the Harley Street team concerned. Just take a deep breath in. OK. Yeah, it's really wonderful. That's great. So your blood pressure for the two readings is 170 over 95. Those numbers are not good. Anything higher than 140 over 90 is considered too high. Which is a far cry from what your blood pressure was before, which means it's really extremely likely that was the reason of your migraine last night. Yeah. Is the yeah. blood pressure. Yeah, mm. yeah. OK, I, I understand that. Tessa is at risk of a stroke, really. Within two weeks, to be at risk of a stroke, it really is a quite shocking. The next two days are going to be critical. It's well established that salt is linked to high blood pressure. And after two weeks of junk food, the levels of salt in Tessa's body are dangerously high. As per the doctor's orders, she's now monitoring her blood pressure frequently. So we're going to take the test and send it on. And, you know, I'm, I'm not... Of course I'm not happy about having such a high result, but I'm hoping that this will be better. This reading is very high for a woman in her 60s. Tessa is in real danger if these numbers don't come down. The cumulative effect of the fast food is really beginning to take its toll. But what about the occasional binge or blowout? 
to understand the effects of what just one binge can have on the body, Dr Michael has decided to eat out this evening. I think I'll have all of it. And take on the ultimate binge. On the menu is The Beast, a 6,000 calorie mega burger. Michael, Hi there. Hello. Nice to see nice you. Here. And you. Tonight, Michael's his own guinea pig. Measuring his every response to this meaty marathon is nutritional specialist Dr Matthew Campbell from the University of Leeds. What's this thing here you got, then? It's a little pill that you will swallow, mm -hmm. and then we'll measure the temperature from inside. It's got electronics in it, is it? It's got a little it's got recorder. A, a little recorder, blimey, and it's going to communicate directly with that. That's very clear. OK, bam, hatch. It'll come out the other end, I assume. Yeah, I don't, I don't need it back. Ah. So this is your core body temperature reader. OK. You can just pop, pop around your head. Right, and it's currently reading 36 degrees. As well as measuring Michael's internal temperature, heart rate, blood pressure and blood fat levels, Matthew will also monitor Michael's arteries using ultrasound. We're going to assess the walls of your blood vessels mm -hmm. and see how flexible they are, see whether they increase in stiffness. <laughs> hey, there we go. Michael's dinner date this evening is Leah Shutkova. Leah is what's known as a competitive eater. This is the 12 Glazed Donut Challenge. And she regularly devours 10,000 calorie super meals. Not the kind of thing that should be attempted at home, though. One minute, 12 seconds. Tonight, she's coaching Michael. How do I start? How do I embrace this? I would 100% say go for the proteins first. Try and keep yourself as upright as possible. Um, take big bites. Eat kind of as quickly as you can. You don't want your body right. to register that you're full. Mm. You're going for a double layer there. Wow. OK. Mm. My stomach is already beginning to say enough. You're not halfway yet. Not even halfway. Not even halfway. <laughs> mm. Mm. Don't give up. You are doing really well. I just think that you're starting to doubt yourself. <laughs> and that's overtaking your ability to <laughs> really get stuck in. I'm not doubting myself. I'm doubting the sanity of doing this. <laughs> After only 20 minutes, Leah is done. Do you want another one while I work my way through this? Absolutely. Bring it out. <laughs> Got a dessert menu. <laughs> oh, jeez. But Michael is still mm. only halfway through the monster burger and is beginning to feel the effects. Oh, God. Sorry, I'm back, Belch. <laughs> Sorry, some of it's coming up again. Hmm. You're doing very well, though. Yeah, I'm getting the grind to hot. This is such a stupid idea. I wonder if I'm going to die doing this. You will not and die. I would hate it to be written on my grave. Died of a burger. What a, <laughs> what a way to die, though. What a way to die, yeah. I'm afraid I'm not going to finish that, but I am going to finish that. So I'm just going to have to cram it all in in one go. Go on, then. Right. <laughs> and we go, just kind of, just go for it, yeah? That's it. You reckon, yeah? This approach should have been your first one. Uh, Tiny mouthful left. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I was generally surprised at how dreadful it made me feel. Michael's managed to eat over 5,000 calories in one sitting. So what's it done to his body? His heart rate is up, showing how hard his body is working. Probably some panic, too. I don't know, am I looking flushed? I feel You're a looking flushed. a little bit flushed, yes. My um, temperature has gone up from 36 to 36.7. But more seriously, his blood fats have more than doubled during the meal. What that suggests is I'm going to drop dead of a heart attack or stroke, but hopefully not this afternoon. God blimey. Also, the ultrasound shows that this meal has temporarily reduced the elasticity of his arteries' walls. Studies have shown that your risk of a heart attack increases in less than two hours after eating a mega meal like this. Of course, for those of you who prefer to keep your gluttony behind closed doors, it has never been easier for the Meat Mountain to come to you. Delivery of some of the most popular fast foods has gone up 73% in the past decade, fueling our consumption even further. Concerned about the rising levels of obesity in Britain, Parliament is now considering a radical new solution, reducing portion sizes for fast food. How are you, sir? 
And tonight, Peter's hopped on his bike to test the reaction of some fast food lovers to the suggested new meal sizes. I mean, I don't know where I'm going. I've got my, my maps, but then again, you know, I am from Australia. This is terrible. Delivery. Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you mind if I join you guys for dinner? No, let's do it. The Nelders get takeaways about twice a week, which is around the national average. I've got your food. What they don't know yet is that Peter has shrunk tonight's dinner down to the proposed new portion sizes. Go for it, guys. Yeah. That's not enough. <laughs> Would you be full from that? No, not really. These reduced portions reflect the recommended calorie intake for dinner. They're saying this is actually all that you need. <laughs> that wouldn't touch the sides. Yeah. We normally have a double burger with some bacon and a lot more chips than that. Who likes pizza? Yes. yes. Oh, it's like Christmas. Open it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I was expecting a whole pizza. There has been talk about trying to clamp down on the amount of calories that people have in each meal. We just order two pizzas each. That's exactly right. The calorie cap is just one idea being suggested to tackle the obesity crisis. We'd all still be hungry. But as long as we are all still in love with our favourites, a solution might be a long way off. Thanks, Peter. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. In North London, Tessa's high blood pressure is not getting any better. It's putting her in immediate danger. And Dr Aboud makes a final decision. It's, a, it's a quite a worrying thing, because that could put you at a risk of having a stroke. As you are 62, there is no guarantee that it's not going to high up again. And I really would recommend that you stop eating the junk food. This is the best way forward. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, my dear. Bye. Well, well, there you have it. And then there were three. The third and final week of the junk food experiment has begun. Hiya. In London, Peter's bringing pizza provisions to his partner in Parliament to keep her going. Is it in there, is it? OK. How do I get in? Woo! So I had bad dreams the first week, I've had bad dreams this week, and then I realised it's the cheese. Mm. There must be some truth in the adage that cheese gives you nightmares, cos I've had them. No nightmares chicken week, but there's no cheese in chicken week. Mm. I've reached my limit. And Nadine, I'm still going. Mm. Despite three weeks of overeating, Peter is still enjoying his fast food. I'm still smiling. I'm still feeling good. I think you're bonkers. Yeah, but have you got a reason or you just think I'm bonkers? <laughs> um, you just think I I'm just, bonkers? Yeah, I just think you're bonkers. Awesome. Concerned about the possible addictive nature of highly processed food, Michael is sending Peter to brain expert Dr Tony Goldstone at Imperial College London. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be very interesting and I need to get started. What we do is we bring people along and we put them in the MRI scanner and we take scans of their brain when they're looking at different types of food on a screen. Dr Goldstone's research has found that junk food activates the same brain circuits as addictive substances, such as drugs and alcohol. And the bits of the brain that lights up is the reward centres in the brain. Now, these are exactly the same bits of the brain that would respond if you were someone who was dependent on alcohol and was shown pictures of alcohol, if you were a cocaine addict and shown pictures of cocaine. Dr Goldstone believes that the seemingly addictive nature of junk food could help explain why so many of us are overeating to the point of obesity. To see if this is what's happening, Peter will be shown pictures of high-calorie junk food. 
and low-calorie healthy food. The MRI will measure how his brain reacts to both. His results will then be compared to those of obese overeaters with established addictive tendencies towards junk food. This is a graph showing how much activation there is in the brain when people are looking at either high-calorie foods or the low-calorie foods. The black dots are about 45 people who are obese, and you can see that for the high-calorie foods, Peter is the second highest amongst those people. So he's even got more activation than the vast majority of people who are obese, and some of these people were really obese. Peter's results suggest that his brain could have become hardwired to crave junk food. A recent study has suggested that eating fast food regularly may actually rewire our brains to crave it even more. So if you eat it regularly as a lifestyle, you may well start becoming dependent on it. What I'm really surprised about is I feel great. While junk food is giving Peter a high, Chaser Sean is far from top of his game. As the Dark Destroyer, Sean prides himself on a mastery of general knowledge and regularly smashes all comers at his local pub quiz. Yay. Yeah. Tonight should be a walk in the park. The German composer Hans Zimmer has won just one Oscar for which 1994 <coughs> Disney animated film? Oh, but after 17 days of overeating junk food, oh, he's, he's struggling. <laughs> Like. I thought it was. Yeah. You know, I thought it was, you know. <laughs> Sean, what name is given to the audio phenomenon where speaker output is picked up by a microphone and amplified further, resulting in unwanted loud squealing or screeching sounds? White noise? Over. Some feedback. Well, there was a couple of questions I missed here, which I should have got. I mean, the feedback question I should have got. Uh, and the Lion King one, I thought it was a Lion King, but... Uh, but it's this dull, it's this dull plane. Just feel it right there. It's just like... Oh, what's it called again? I just feel... In Westminster, MP Nadine Dorries is on day 19 of the junk food diet, and she's in pizza purgatory. It's 4 a.m. I kind of got really bad indigestion and starving too. Pizza's hard to get down, stain your gut like a lump, and then you're starving very quickly. And I don't suppose I'll go back and sleep at about 6 o'clock and then feel awful. Nadine's always had a cordial relationship with her lavatory, but this diet has definitely led to the outbreak of hostilities. I keep getting these really sharp cramps in my stomach, and they're not kind of like going to the toilet cramps. They're kind of higher up, and they're just like really sharp, like stabbing pains that come quickly. Before the experiment began, Nadine's poo sample showed a healthy gut. Three weeks in, and Nadine has given us another sample. Anywhere along here, please. Which is being analysed by a leading digestive health specialist at Imperial College London. We have these passengers that we carry with us. And these are the microbes, the bacteria, the viruses, the small um, fungi that live in and on us. Most of them live in the gut. Each of us has up to two kilos of bacteria living in our intestines. And we've got trillions of them, about 100 trillion. They use the fibre in our diet to make chemicals that keep us healthy. So what will almost three weeks of binging on low-fibre junk food have done to Nadine's previously good gut bacteria? So, Julian, do you have my results back? Yes, I've been looking over them, comparing them to what we had before. And I've got to say that they're pretty striking. There's a measure of inflammation in your gut, and that's gone from zero to really high. Protein called calprotectin, is one we'd use to measure if people had inflammatory bowel disease. Right. And your level's gone up hugely. Wow. It really has moted up. And if I didn't know you didn't have inflammatory bowel disease, I'd be telling you to go to your GP to have your gut tested. In just under three weeks, the junk food diet has hammered Nadine's gut so hard, her bacteria levels now look like those of someone with really hardcore bowel disease. You've done quite a lot of 
maybe damage to your gut by eating this diet. Okay. But what this would do, it mostly would inflame your gut, could increase your risk of colorectal cancer. It may make your gut leaky, which means that your liver gets exposed to compounds and chemicals that are bad for it. Your heart and your kidneys may get exposed to compounds and chemicals that are bad for them as well. So long term, this might have had a serious impact on your overall health. That's a bit of a shocker for me. I'm totally kind of floored by that, to be honest. I'll never eat junk food again. Finally, after almost three weeks, even our junk food junkie has had his fill. Last night, that pizza was one of the best I've ever had. It tasted so good, but it has killed me. My stomach's not happy at all. And now the thought of having to eat pizza Peter is normally ludicrously chipper, but now he's finding that when he needs his energy, he's running on empty. A real struggle today. Obviously, the show must go on. You've got to smile, but normally I'm so, so buzzing and I'm a little bit kind of... I feel a bit flat. If I was performing tonight, I would have really struggled. Clearly, it's having an effect on me today. The experiment has just one more day to run, but it's not over yet as our junk food junkies go cold turkey. I've got the worst headache, bloated, uncomfortable. I was feeling better when I was on it. Yummy, eh? The junk food experiment has come to an end after 21 days of overeating. Mm. Dr Michael Mosley started with six brave lab rats, but just three diehards are left standing. Ish. Miss you, yeah, I miss you. How bizarre, right? This is the day after the fast food. I've got the worst headache, bloated, uncomfortable, <laughs> just unbelievable. I was feeling better when I was on it. And Peter's not the only one who's gone cold turkey. I reckon I've gone through some kind of withdrawal type thing. I'm literally covered in perspiration. I'm shaking, trembling. Even my scalp is wet. I can't keep my hands still. <laughs> Chaser Sean's got a bit more than withdrawal to worry about, though. Earlier in the experiment, sleep-deprived Sean was warned he was at risk of developing the potentially serious condition, sleep apnea, from eating junk food. Dr Ian Smith at Papworth Hospital asked him to wear a sleep monitor for the duration of the experiment. Got your results to go oh, through. Oh, good, good. These blue lines are where you have a pause in your breathing of 10 seconds or more. That's an apnea, is the technical term for it. This red line measures airflow. And here you're breathing, and then you stop. And here you're breathing, and then you stop. The results are not good. They show Sean stops breathing for at least 10 seconds multiple times a night. And comparing his results from earlier in the experiment, Dr Smith believes it's the junk food that's made it so severe. You'd gone from not quite having sleep apnea to now you've got it. On this tracing, the number of dips in your oxygen level per hour was about double what it was before. Mm -hmm. And it'd been made worse by this process. In terms of the junk food I've been yeah, taking? Yeah. 21 days of overeating junk food has given Sean full-blown sleep apnea. Having this condition could now increase his risk of heart attack or stroke. Today, it's junk food that is the dark destroyer. The full medical results for the three remaining guinea pigs are in. And whilst they return to Harley Street for a final weigh-in, Michael assesses the damage from the experiment. So what I have here is the results for all the tests we did, and, uh, wow. What the junk food diet has done in an astonishingly short period of time is absolutely wrecked their bodies. MRI scans on Peter revealed his brain might in fact be hardwired to crave junk food. So it might be no surprise he's managed to gain the most weight. 3.4 kilograms. Which is half a stone, isn't it? Which is it? half a stone. Worryingly, his waist size has barely increased, which suggests the extra weight has been put on internally. 
that fat, extra fat, it's the fat around your organs, is what causes the most damage. A healthy level is about 8% fat in your liver. With Peter, it could be up to 30% now. It's not from alcohol, because I don't drink. I never really thought it was possible that the food can be doing that sort of damage, and it clearly is. If he'd continued down this road, then I have no doubt at all it would have led to liver failure. Hurrah for Nadine, because we started off with three women and we were left with one. Hi, Nadine. How are you? Okay. What's been interesting about her is the impact, I think, on her microbiome, her gut bacteria. The middle, your girth, and I know you had to go and buy a bigger Yeah, protein. well, it's gone up two inches. Your gut is not happy, your colon is distended, mm. so that's given you that extra girth. So I think she will be really pleased to come off this regime. Sean entered the experiment as a self-confessed junk food junkie who thought he had a get-out-of-jail-free card. Sean is a very fit guy. He does a lot of exercise, and that's, I imagine, he thinks is keeping things at bay, and it's not. Exercise is great, but you just can't outrun a bad diet. Sean's lifetime of fast food and family history meant he was already dangerously close to diabetes, and the past three weeks really haven't helped. The diabetes test we started at 40 is going up to 41, which is not a good indication. If we get to 42, the level, it means drastic measures to prevent you from having diabetes. His average blood glucose levels should sit between 20 and 42. If you go above that, you're pre-diabetic. At 41, Sean is a hair's breadth away. He has to do something now, otherwise he will, without a doubt, be a type 2 diabetic within a decade. After 21 days on this experiment, Sean is now a borderline pre-diabetic and has sleep apnea, which are both potentially fatal conditions. But I think the enormous surprise has been the fact they haven't put on a lot of weight, so a lot of the damage which has been going on has not been visible. It's actually going on internally, and it's because we've been able to do all this range of tests on them, we know what is happening to them. The scale, the speed, the impact on their bodies was far more devastating than anybody would have thought possible in such a short period of time. We've invited Haley and Tessa to rejoin our guinea pigs for a spot of well-deserved TLC, as Diet Dr Michael puts them on the road to recovery. Hello. 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 Do we like lots of it? He said anxiously. I um, love tomatoes. Yeah. Brilliant. How's it been? Absolutely hell. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't take any time. Not for yeah. me. Scientific studies have suggested that a diet made up of leafy greens, fruit and veg, whole grains, unrefined carbs and simple proteins like those found in fish can tackle the damage junk food causes. Tessa, the main thing was your blood pressure. That went up to like 180 on 190. I mean, I have seen people die with blood pressures Scary. like that. But I, I never expected that myself at all. From day one, bang, a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'm. I'm actually not telling you in how much pain I'm in. I'm covering it up. I have a history of. Uh, diabetes in my family and I never ever thought that given the level of exercise I do that would even get remotely close uh, to getting type 2 diabetes. I mean I have the same thing my dad died of diabetes related illnesses and I discovered six years ago that I was a type 2 diabetic but I did something about it reversed it I'm completely fine but this is the moment. Yep. I am super confident if you eat this stuff then you'll see some pretty dramatic changes so uh, bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we all up for it? We all up for it yeah one for all and all for What I didn't realise was that you could have some of the acute problems as a result of eating junk food without actually putting the weight on. That was a revelation. What damage could happen is quite extraordinary and it's given me a bit of a wake-up call. One thing this has taught me is that I will never eat junk food again. <laughs>